just so you know, if you have a healing testimony or the miraculous or some breakthrough, would you write it up on one of these sheets? Where do we keep these things anymore? Where is, go ahead, Pat, speak up. They're in that room. Okay, just so you all know, because I'm still learning. <clears throat> this room over here is the... I'm not sure what we're going to call it. <laughs> but it's the prayer room. It's the get you baptized in the Holy Spirit room. It's the take you aside and if you need extra time, minister to you room. Is it anything else? Okay, I think that's it for now. We have a number of classrooms and other areas that are going to be utilized for things, uh, different things, different classes. We've got somebody interested in starting a Karis Bible study here. We've got, uh, uh, like I said, lots of classes coming. Is anybody interested in night classes during the week? <clears throat> Keep your hands up so I can see them. Okay, good. Is there anybody interested in a Saturday class? Okay. I'm considering doing healing school once a month on a Saturday, more of a conference type. There are other things that are coming and we're going to do and bring in types of training classes. So I just kind of want to wet the whistle and, <clears throat> and, kind of, and get you prepared for more, again, because this is to help you get ready. Amen? All right. If you would... Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. The title of this series we're starting on now. Now I feel like I can start getting into more of the teaching aspect. Hitting your spiritual stride. Whoa. Hitting your spiritual stride. You know we're all in a race. Whether you like it or not. No matter what condition you're in, you're in a race. Right? No matter what physical condition. We are in a race. What kind of a race? Wow, that's a big question. The race that we are in is to stay in the faith of Jesus Christ, to live in what he's given us by grace, to succeed and live in victory until our last breath and we go home. To walk it out all the way. That's the race. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, and it is continual. It's for all of our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. I want to read this to you in this race that we're in. That's not the title of the message. But we are in a race, and I want you to be aware of that. Okay? Being in a race has some requirements for all of us. This one is called keeping on. Keeping on. Hitting your spiritual stride and keeping on. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 20. Some of us know this really, really well. <clears throat> For all the promises of God in him, Jesus, are yes and in him, amen, or so be it, or it is done. To the glory of God through us. Is that good or what? Okay, say it with me. For all the promises of God are in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God <clears throat> through us. You just released power by what you said. Declaring that all the promises of God in Jesus are yes and in him amen. To the glory of God through us. You declared that you have released power to work in your life right now by what you said. <clears throat> now, here's the expectation for those of us that are under grace. This is what happens when you begin to get a hold of grace. The message of grace, the message of what Jesus has already accomplished that we don't beg for. But we can accept from him, not based on us, but based on what he did. We have this expectation that all of a sudden, all the gifts, all the blessings, and all the promises are instant. We begin to work into that mentality. And they just aren't. Are they? Because why don't they always take place 
instantly. There's a lot of reasons. Lots and lots and lots of reasons. Which we cover a lot of this and it has to do with the heart, it has to do with circumstances, it has to do with previous belief systems and doctrines, it has to do with a lot of different things. But we have this expectation that everything is kind of microwaved under grace. We're in a microwave system, a microwave culture, a microwave society, and a microwave church. If I don't see the miracles instantly, something is wrong. Either with God or with the Word, or not necessarily with me. Now, that's kind of our thinking. <clears throat> okay? It's, it's a subtle thing. Don't take this as condemnation. But it's subtle. So you're going along and you're believing the promises and you're believing for the blessings and you're believing for the good things that God's got for you and bang, it doesn't happen and you hit a wall. What do you do? What do you do? <coughs> you begin by keeping on. You hit another wall, you begin by keeping on. And keeping on, and keeping on, and keeping on. Because let me give you a couple other promises. All right? Now these are promises. Now you remember you just said with me that all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Here's another promise. My brethren, James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren and my sistren, Count and consider it all joy, not if, but when, you fall into various trials, hardships, tribulation, persecution, hard stuff. Knowing that the testing of your faith in Jesus, what he's done, what he's given, produces Patience. Oh, we hate that word. And patience in this text, in the, in the Greek, it means endurance. <clears throat> endurance. This is one thing that we are so lacking in the body, just as Christians. And I see this in a lot of the understanding of grace or the message of grace. It should be instant. Hey, listen, God's best is instant. But his best is still the answer overall. Okay? <clears throat> when people have asked me about their healings, they say, how come I don't see this right now? Why don't I see it right now? It should be instant. Yeah. If you can receive, it will be instant. But it's not based on God because he's already done it. It's based on you. And all kinds of complications that we bring in. Well, we bring those complications into prosperity. We bring them into righteousness. We bring them into forgiveness. We bring them into God's unconditional love. We bring them into all kinds of areas of our life. We bring the complications in. They're still there. And they can be quick. And sometimes they take time. Sometimes it takes time for the circumstances and others involved for things to work. And we have to, we understand this is the testing of our faith. Our faith is being tested to see where we're really at so we can see it. Because God already knows where it is. So we can see it. Because the testing of our faith, each one of us, produces endurance. And it only produces endurance if we keep on. That's the clincher in this whole thing. If we keep on. But let patience or endurance, verse 4, have its perfect work or its complete work. It's kind of work that puts the finishing touches on our lives. I'm giving you the Greek tense here. That you may be perfectly furnished inside your heart and your mind. Your spirit's already done. So that you might be perfectly furnished 
and complete, lacking nothing. Nothing. So what this is about today, keep it on. This is hitting our spiritual stride. Because we're all in a race to grow up. We're all in a race to increase and prosper. All of us are, like it or not. Some of us are, you know, we're a little slower than others. I've been there. But we're still moving forward. God wants us to learn endurance. It's a part of his will. And it's a promise that we will. So all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. And one of the promises is that you need endurance and need to learn it. How does endurance happen? Why do we need endurance? We need endurance in order to go through, to be able to get to the promises. We need that to be the successes that God's called us to be. Sometimes it's just to keep it on more than anything else. We need endurance so that we can see our faith accomplishes what God has said it will. We need endurance so that we can understand the experience part of reaching the end of those promises, whatever they are, however long it takes or whatever it is we walk through. We need endurance. Now, endurance really is perseverance. Persevering. I mean, keeping on and keeping on and keeping on no matter what happens. Okay. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, Jesus said, he who endures to the end all of the way through the trial will be saved, healed, delivered, prospered. There was a, an Englishman named Shackleton. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Rosie and I have a documentary on this called The Endurance. And this whole thing is about in 1914, 1915, Ernest Shackleton took a group of explorers with him from England to the Antarctic. And it was a botch from the beginning. But the ship got stuck in the ice and it got crushed. They lost the ship. And then after the ship sank, all the crew was stuck with a couple of lifeboats and some bare provisions and they were living on the ice flow and then they had to get off because it was melting and then they finally found a place where they could kind of hover or stay and it was a rocky island that had nothing. And they survived for months on almost nothing. They had, they developed gangrene, they had they were sick, they were malnourished, they had, I mean, they had all kinds of problems and issues. But see, the, the issue was, is just like the name of the ship, they endured through it. Now, they did this without the Lord because their will to live was stronger than their desire to die. We who have God in us, with us, we have his power in the Holy Spirit. We have the promises in the word, have so much more. And yet we struggle to endure or persevere to get to those blessings, those promises that he has for us. Why? Why do we do that? We want to because our nature, our human nature is so geared to quit when we hit resistance. Our human nature is so ready to surrender and say, I give up. It's not life or death, I'm going to walk away. I don't know if you've noticed how more and more prevalent it is in the world around us, but suicide is becoming more the answer of the way out rather than endure through. 
And because, the reason is, is because the world has no hope. None. But you see, everything we face that takes endurance requires endurance. I can look at a number of you out here and know that you have or are in the middle of enduring a trial by faith, in faith, going toward the promises. And you'll see them if you endure, if you persevere. Now, why it's not happening instantly? I don't know, individually and personally. But we're all going to go through issues and hardships that require endurance. But the difference between us and the world is we have hope. And I don't mean hope like, oh, I hope everything's okay. I mean biblical hope, which means an absolute unshakable confidence that our God is able and willing and doing and working to take us through to the other side if we just keep on. That's what we have. The pressure to give in and give up is immense all around us. I had a nephew, very dear nephew, born again, who knew the Lord, and he committed suicide because he couldn't endure anymore. He had lost all hope and was so deceived by the loss of hope and not getting it back. I'm talking about the confidence in the Lord and getting it back. That taking his own life was easier than enduring to the end. James 1 verse 12. James 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man or woman who endures testing or temptation for when he or she has been approved. Approved means to be tried. Actually be tried out, tested. When they've been approved, they will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. I want to jump to the next one. I'm not going to give you time to turn or you can click maybe that fast, okay? But Hebrews 10, verses 35 and 36, this is our exhortation. Hebrews 10, verses 35 and 36 says, Therefore, now this is to the beloved, do not cast or throw away your confidence which has great reward. For you have need of endurance. You have need of perseverance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. I remember when my neck was uh, out. Many of you know about this. And I've had many, many healing issues I've walked through. But my neck was out for years. Five years. I endured the pain and the incredible uh, mental problems that came from this and the symptoms that came from this because my neck was out to where they couldn't do surgery. I went and checked. But you know, I just decided to believe God from the beginning. And it was difficult. Oh God, it was difficult. But I made a decision to believe God that I was going to endure through to my healing or I was going to go home I knew that I was healed. I knew that it was done. I knew that it was finished. And I'd be curled up in a fetal position sometimes because the pain was so bad. And I went to work every day. And yet, I didn't see it right away. And then, one day, getting in the car to go to church, I said to Rosie, my wife, for those of you that don't know her. I, I mean, I was just saying, thank you, Lord, for healing me. She was getting in the car. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. And immediately, I mean, instantaneously, I knew 
I knew I believed God. I knew that it was done. And everything changed. I could feel the, the vertebrae and the, I could feel a movement of everything changing in my neck. It was instant. And instantly all of the, the pain and the, the clouded thinking and the, all the symptoms that came with it, there was a lot of them. They were gone. Never been back. I, but you know what? I endured because I knew the promise. It was not pleasant. It was not fun. I could have quit. I could have just gone home to be with the Lord. Many times I thought about it. And I had a decision to make whether to endure and go through or not. Before I married Rosie, this was nearly 20 years ago, I was single for 13 years. I'd gone through an awful marriage, very difficult. And <clears throat> it was a mess. And when the divorce happened, I said, Lord, I'd really like to be married again to a godly woman who loves you, just like I do. And I heard him. He gave me a word. And then I endured single and celibate for 13 years. Now, am I going to tell you it was easy? Absolutely not. It was not just a cakewalk. But I learned endurance, and then the Lord brought me the best. Endurance comes and matters as a fact in all of our lives. Enduring to see the promises. It doesn't mean they're not going to come. It just means you endure and you keep on till you see them. That's all. You just keep on till you see them because they're still there. Don't quit. There isn't any going back. We endure when things are out of control and there's nothing any of us can do about it. Nothing. We endure. And we endure because losing out and missing out on the promises of God are not an option. Amen. And they can't be because they're still there and they're still real. There's nothing you cannot endure or go through if you remember these things, these points that I want to give you. They're a part of growing up into all things, Paul says in Ephesians 4.15. Number one. The need to endure, the need to persevere to the promises of God. This is under grace. The need to endure or persevere is a promise. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. How to do it. Here it is. Number one. Pray. Pray. Don't give up. Don't quit on prayer. In the midst of enduring to go through to the promise, pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 and 17 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Wow. Wow. It's part of enduring. Praying in tongues and praying in your understanding is a part of prayer. The baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you the gift of tongues with it. And your spirit prays in those times you just don't know what to pray anymore. But praying in tongues and praying with your understanding is a part of this. And let it be regular and continual. Number two. Put on the new man. Put on the new man. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay, we have a struggle with this. Because we are not 
cognizant of who we are mentally. We don't know who we are yet. Yeah, we're new creations. We're new people. We have a new identity. And yet, if we knew, if we really knew who we were in him that we put on, that we have put on, if we really understood it and we really believed it, man, I'm telling you things would change in our lives, in your life right now. If you really believed who you really are. Put on the new man. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. It is of utmost importance that we learn, but not just head knowledge. It has to get into our heart where we believe who we are, who God says we are. Because our tendency is always to look back to who the pattern of we, what we used to be is. And that is not who we is. We are, we are new creations in Jesus Christ. We are brand new. We are unique. We are whole. We are able. We are full of the Holy Spirit. We are, we have so much. This is who we are. The power of God resides in us. And yet, our brains stop us from believing that. To put on the new man is to get your mind adjusted, really adjusted to who you are. When you do this, the endurance will get easier. Number three, feast on the word. Feast on the word. All the promises are in there. All of what God says about you is in there. All of what he has for you is in there. All the encouragement that you need is in there. It's great to listen to teaching, go to podcasts, or, or listen to teachers or teaching ministries. It's great to do that. But nothing will fulfill you and feed you and shore you up like you getting in the word for yourself. If you're just listening to teachings then you are missing out and you are missing out on feasting on the word yourself. It'll never be as deep, as clear, or revelatory as what you get on your own. 1 Peter 2, verses 2 and 3, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby and growing in endurance. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, if you have tasted that he is full of grace, when you feast on the word, here's the tandem part of this. Get a word from God. When you're enduring something that you're facing, get a word from God. When you're feasting on the word, say, Lord, I need a word from you. I need a word from you. And I can put my faith right there and I can stand no matter how long, how much, or what it is. And I can go through to the promises because they're on the other end of this. However long or short it is, if it's instant tomorrow or if it takes years after this, I have them and they are mine because I have a word from you and I have your word. Feast on it. Get it for yourself. Next one. Now this is the hard one because our flesh fights against this big time. When you're enduring something, face it head on. Ooh. See, our natural inclination is to run. Our flesh doesn't like hard. Our flesh doesn't like endurance. We don't like it. Remember, you're hitting your spiritual stride here. You're growing up into maturity like I'm talking the enviable stuff. When we used to work for Andrew Womack, you know, would look at Andrew and I'd go, Man, I am really glad it is you and not me. <laughs> and I admired the things that he walked through and just seemed to kind of go through it with these. He didn't get there overnight, I guarantee you. He learned to endure by faith and go through. And they were not, all those promises were not immediate. I, I promise you this. But he endured and he endured and he endured. 
And I look at Paul. He endured. He endured. And Peter and all the apostles. And I look at my brothers and sisters around the world who I know are going through stuff and they're enduring. And they're making it. And they're going towards the promises. It's the same with us. Face it head on. Don't run. Do not run. David went forward head on to Goliath. He could have run away. That was the battle. And that's what you face is a battle. All of us. Hit it head on. Eyes up. Head straight. Go forward. And keep on. Romans 8, verses 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Do we have a need to learn to endure? Absolutely. We'll fold right up if we don't. We'll forsake, we'll abandon the victories, we'll abandon the promises if we don't learn to endure. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We're just looking more and more like Jesus. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Next one, number five. When you are in the midst of enduring, don't complain. Whoa. <laughs> don't complain. Do you know what complaining does? Yeah. It negates your faith. Yeah, it, does. it releases power that works against you when you complain. Complain about what you're facing. Complain about the circumstances. Complain about God. Complain about whatever it might be. You magnify it and you make it bigger and it hurts you. Proverbs 18 verse 21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Good, bad, right, wrong, positive or negative. If you complain, it hurts you. When we complain about something and we're enduring, this is the hard part because it feels like you just want to vent. But what you're doing, and, and I, I want you to see this because we have, we release power when we speak, right? We do. And things change. And when we complain, we're releasing power that hurts us. If you're complaining when you're enduring, recognize what you're doing and stop. Lose the complaining. Remember 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17 says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks. All right, last one, number six. When you are learning how to endure as you're learning this, okay? This is hitting your spiritual stride. Expect to come out better than when you went in. Because you will. When you're done, when you're through, as you have endured, you've not cast away your confidence. You will come out better than when you went in. Every time. Romans 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things as we endure, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You will always, always, always come out better than when you went in by keeping on and doing these things. Always. We all have need of endurance and learning endurance in our lives. In every single situation. Again, some are short, and you can see the end of it.
few days. And some, you can't see the end of it. Don't quit. Learn how to endure to see the promises unfold because they are yours. And they always will be. Amen? Amen? Would you stand with me? Prayer team, where are you? <laughs> now listen, if you are kind of wrestling with enduring in something, remember this is a promise of God that we're going to learn how to endure and we need to learn how to endure. But if you're enduring something and you're just having a hard time, this is a testing of your faith. Why don't you line your faith up with somebody else and allow them to shore up with you and help you continue to endure. Man, you're growing. God's doing good things in you. And you're going to see the end result and you're going to see the promises. You're going to come out better than when you went in. If you need prayer today, if you need a breakthrough or a miracle, if you would like the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues, it is important, it is a necessity for our lives. And please come see one of our prayer team and they'll just help you. They are full of faith and they've been through some stuff and they can help you understand how to hit your spiritual stride and help you with it and see the breakthrough. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, gosh, we love you. Thanks for your goodness and for always helping us, Lord, to rise up and live in the success in your kingdom you've given us to learn how to do this. Thanks for cementing in us what we've got to have and helping us, Lord, to put your word to work and see the results. Thanks for all your promises that are yes in him and amen in him. We love you, Lord, and thank you, Jesus, for paying that price for us. We will endure and we will see the end result of your promise and your promises in our lives. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Praise God. Praise, praise God. Praise, praise God.